attended the division contest. And during the interview session with one of the contestants, she proudly announced to the audience that she had been happily married for two years. <laughs> and I sat in the audience and said, what a coincidence. I've been happily married for two years. <laughs> it's the other 18 that were difficult. <laughs> wife and I waited until we were 34 years old to get married. Now we had been in long-term relationships before, but we had never gotten to the two magic words that lead to a happy marriage. Prenuptial agreement. <laughs> <laughs> After our wedding and we were living together, I soon discovered that my wife liked a life of adventure. Every morning would start with a frantic chase. Where did I put my purse? Where's my wallet? Where's my car keys? And I suggested to my bride, you know, if at the end of the day you would just pick a spot, any spot, and then just always put your purse and car keys there, in the morning we could sleep an extra 15 minutes. Because it would be there. My advice fell on deaf. <laughs> so a few years into the marriage, one day I was demonstrating to my wife my new discovery that if you <coughs> properly place the dishes and the silver in the dishwasher so that it's exposed to the water and drains properly, <laughs> they get cleaner. <laughs> and my wife said, there's a right way to load a dishwasher? And I said, yes. And she said, you know, when we were at the altar, I thought you were Mr. Right. I didn't realize that you are Mr. Always Right. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> High school valedictorian, summa cum laude honors graduate in college, and member of the UCLA Law Review? Of course I was always <laughs> right. stop my bride from sharing her wrong opinions with me all the time. And this would have drawn me, driven me mad if I hadn't developed a powerful skill. I trained my ears to tune out the frequency of my wife's voice so she could rattle on and on about whatever she felt was important and I could remain focused on what was important to me. And one day, I was engaged in my favorite morning habit, reading the obituaries. <laughs> well, as a probate attorney, I have to plan out my schedule. <laughs> Attending funerals of strangers is lead generation or client development. <laughs> I was focused on my task, and then my wife started talking and talking and talking. And I was saying, yes, dear, yes, dear, yes, dear. And then she accused me, and she said, you're not listening to a word I said. I said, yes, I did. I heard everything. She said, prove it. And so then I started telling her everything she had just said. And this didn't make her happy. <laughs> this made her mad. <laughs> because she knew I wasn't listening. But my wife's problem is she had never learned the first rule of professional speaking. Same speech, different audience. <laughs> Free speeches. As soon as I heard the key words, I knew everything else that was coming out. So I could easily repeat what she said. Well, my wife has great quality, and one of those is that she's both petty and vindictive. And so she vowed to get revenge. And ten years later, well, in order to set this up, first we had to have a child. Then we had the child, and ten years later, I'm watching my team, the Minnesota Vikings, playing in the game against New Orleans to see who goes to the Super Bowl. And my wife had trained my son that what you do is when the two-minute warning goes off, 
now is the time to go in and start to talk to your father about all the important things in your day. <laughs> but I had this skill. I am a master of permanent partial attention. So I was able to focus on my son and the game at the same time until I made the mistake of saying to my son, yes, dear. <laughs> and my son got in my face. And he says, I'm not dear, I'm Connor. And I says, yes, Connor, you're blocking the screen. Could you move to the other screen? <laughs> now, I'm sure you're all wondering why I feel comfortable sharing these secrets with you. Well, I'm at a Toastmasters meeting, Toastmasters contest. And seven years ago, when I joined Toastmasters and I went to my first area contest, my wife and my son came too. And they have never returned to a Toastmasters. <laughs> so I can tell you anything, and no, I will never get back to them. My son still wakes up in the middle of the night saying, make them stop, make them stop. I say, what? Stop what? Stop speaking! <laughs> My guide to you for a happy marriage. Be a Toastmaster without your wife present. <laughs> <laughs> <That was it. laughs>